All right, action. So yeah, now we're gonna clear up the misconception about baby scratches. Uh, a lot of people uh, feel like there's not a big difference when uh, using TTM notation to show what a baby scratch looks like. A lot of times you'll see a baby scratch as like a triangular uh, wave, like a triangle. Um, but in fact, you know, as far as physics is concerned, the laws of physics, um, there's no way that one can change directions instantaneously. Um, that's impossible to change. It. Um, and the only way to do that is to use this switch, which is a reverse, like, toggle switch, which, you know, you hit that switch and the thing reverses automatically. So with the digital turntable, you can reverse automatically. And with this tutorial, I'm going to show the difference between what a baby scratch sounds like when you're doing it naturally versus if you uh, do a baby scratch with a, a toggle switch. All right, so here we go. Got it awesome. So look. So that's the baby scratch. Turn this up a little bit. So that's the baby scratch. Now listen what, what happens when we use the toggle switch. This is uh so this right here is a bell curve. When I'm just going like that, you can represent it as a as a sine wave, you can represent it as a bell curve, um uh in statistics. Um so it's just basically you know a curved curved shape. Uh I'll go get a um poster, but uh let's see, one second. And yeah, so basically, um, as far as the laws of physics, um, we can do uh, things that go back and forth like that. Um, but the thing is, is that, you know, it's uh, impossible for the human hand to do. Only uh, a, a digital hand can make a perfect triangle. So what we're talking about here is this. Is if we have a perfect triangle going back and forth, a digital toggle going... going forward, back, forward, back, that's like a, a triangle because you see that the speed is not, the speed is a constant speed. Anytime you have a line, a perfect straight line, that means it's a constant speed. So here's a constant speed, it's playing forward. This is a constant speed, the beat is playing backwards. Now, um, anytime you go forward and then backwards, it's going to sound like this. So see, it doesn't sound like a baby scratch. So that's that's what a perfect triangular sound would sound like. That's a perfect triangle. So what I was doing was this right here. I was doing digital reverse switch toggles. I was just going forward, backwards, forward, backwards. And um, as opposed to a baby scratch, which is right here, like I was saying before, baby scratch is going to follow a bell curve uh, of some sort. And um, it's going to sound like this. Faster. All right, so now we're going to see what that sounds like with the toggle switch. It doesn't sound the same. And the reason it doesn't sound the same is because mathematically they're totally different. So when you have a triangular scratch wave like this, a triangle going forward, backwards, forward, and backwards like I was just doing, you notice that it just sounds like a sampler hitting it. It's just a sampler hitting the thing forward and a sampler toggle going backwards. You don't hear the, the slowing down and the speeding up. And if any of you have ever done um, like uh, calisthenics before, like in gym class, they have something called suicides where you have to basically, you've got to like, you know, run from here to here, right? And you like run from there and then you got to run back, then you got to run here, run back, run here, run back, run here, run back. 
And if you've ever done those before, you know that by the time you get to the wall and you have to war run back, you know, it takes time to slow down and speed back up. You can't just run at the same speed and then totally just uh, change directions and, and run at the other, um, run the same speed the other way. And a car can't do that. Uh, you know, even a car has to slow down and speed up. An airplane can't do that. And, you know, the only thing that could do that, some people say UFOs can do that. But that's not using our technology and, and our, our, our modern physics. So who knows if, if, uh, if that's possible for, you know, objects to really fly like that. But as far as, you know, on Earth and what, what we're doing, you know, uh, that's never been proven that we can make objects, you know, change directions. So basically, uh, you know, this is the main difference. So, you know, we've got this, the smooth bell curve right here which is this thing. So that's going forward, backwards, forward, backwards, forward, back. So, and that's called the baby scratch. So that's going forward, backwards, forward, backwards. So to get in more in depth into what we were just covering, and we're just gonna talk about uh, the physics of uh, movement again in general, um, so but yeah, basically, uh, scratches are you know generally always follow like a curved pattern. You're never gonna have um, if somebody does if you do see a scratch drawn as a perfect triangle, then you know that is more of a like a sim it's kind of a um, which we would call it an approximation. Like when you round a number off, if you say a number is 35, you can round it on to 30. So it's like oh, it's basically 30. So when somebody, when you see like, um, you know, the triangular scratch waves, that's more that somebody's just saying, yeah, basically it's forward, backwards. But the thing is, is that, you know, it's, it's uh, not showing the, the change of direction and the change of direction um, is always when you're at zero. So right here, you're at zero speed when you're at change of direction. But you see how it's speeding up and then it's kind of going at constant speed then it's slowing down and then it's changing direction that's how um, things pretty much uh, occur in nature and then if you see a part that's um, just a piece of that where it's like speeding up but then you don't see the other parts happening that means it's a closed fader scratch where you're cutting off the sound so every sound every scratch is basically just a baby scratch underneath it different types of baby scratches different heights um, or scribbles underneath it but um, which are baby scratches that are going really fast but the thing is is that you can cut off different parts of it so if I cut off this you're just gonna see a straight line if I'm cutting off uh, the, the, the curved parts you know so this is uh, the exponential part right here speeding up and this is the logarithmic part slowing down so that's showing that this is like an exponential cut but if there's exponential cut that means there's some there was something else here after that where you know it's got to slow down or something if they're gonna bring it back and they're not you're just not seeing that because you're cutting it off with the crossfader so in closed fader scratches, they're not going to make. It's not going to make a difference. It's just going to be just like a sample trigger, where you could say, "See, I'm doing a stab." And I did a backward stab, but it doesn't matter because it's just a stab. It's the same as like if you had a keyboard and you're just doing a sample trigger which is, uh, you know, just like if I said this right here, let me give it a little trigger, do it on C, and if I just sit, put it on play, it's the same as that, it's like stab, see? So close fader scratches, you can get away with, with representing them as straight lines, when it's just like a stab or something like that. So you see the stab here is a straight line, and that's basically what I'm doing right here, it's just a stab. But to, but to differentiate a, a, a stab uh, that's a black uh, close dot fader scrap, that black dot means that you're starting with the cross fader closed and then you're turning it on. From a trigger, from a sample trigger, you know, these are all sample triggers. Like, that's a stab too. You see, that's a stab, but really it's a sample trigger. And that's what I was just doing. This is a sample trigger. So that's what the notation for this is. This is sample trigger notation. All right, so that's what this is. This is sample. This is a trigger forward and then a trigger backward. So, and we'll zoom in a little bit so we can see this a little bit more. And yeah, once again, um, this is a digital um, reverse switch um, toggling. So, 
you know, it seems like this is a baby scratch, but it doesn't have the same sound as a baby scratch because this is just forward and reverse um, toggling versus an actual baby scratch, which is nice, smooth, round lines. And I just did a lecture on how uh, um, Tony Scratchery is, is probably one of the um, has one of the best forms as far as uh, uh, a lot of TTM composers out there because his lines are very very curved as opposed to uh, lines that are um, basically you know just the perfectly uh, like triangles like this. We have another one like this. We just have perfect triangle just going forward and back. So that's digital reverse, reverse reverse toggling and we'll do that again so this does not sound like a baby scratch right so we cleared it up baby scratch sounds like this And sometimes if the sample is, uh, you know, like a, a sample like this ah sound that is very consistent sound, you're not even going to notice that backwards sound because the sample sounds almost the same backwards as forwards. Whereas with the baby scratch, you always notice when you change the direction. With the ba baby scratch, you notice that you go... You can notice that change of direction. Alright? You can hear it. Versus... It doesn't, that doesn't sound real. So this is why we notate uh, the baby scratch as being a curved wave as opposed to just a, a, a straightforward uh, line. Like Johnny One Move UK, you know, he's got some really cool tutorials and a lot of cool, uh, you know, um, scratch TTM diagrams. But the thing is, is that all the lines are perfectly straight lines. And the thing is, is that, you know, with those straight lines, um, it's not really expressing what what the scratch is and the type of scratch. So scratches like lasers, you know, that involve um, and tasers and stuff like that that involve, uh, you know, using like uh, an exponential movement. You can't notate that with just a straight line. You have to show that the the line is a curve. So this is a taser when you have a click on a on a laser. But uh, let me show you the actual thing of a laser. A laser is right here. So a laser is going. Through, through. So you see that's going. It's starting off. It's starting off fast. It's going, and it slows down, and then it slows down. All right. And even this depiction is is um is not totally accurate because they would be a little bit more curved at the tip of there. But this is just more to accentuate it so you can see it from far away. That's why it looks more like a very sharp uh, change of direction. But yeah, it's always going to be curved lines. You see how these are. All these lines here are curved. And the only ones that aren't curved basically are these are are these uh, digital ones over here. So you see all these digital lines that are curved, and uh, you can, we can also see an analog uh, reverse switch versus this digital reverse switch that we were just doing. An analog reverse switch is going to slow down and it's going to speed back up like a real turntable. And we'll go over to a real turntable right now. So that is basically analog movement, and uh, analog means analogous, and analogous means that you know it has to basically uh, take a real path. You know, it's a real vinyl, and it's a real sound that's coming out versus a digitized sound, which is all broken up into numbers. And um, you know, so with CDJs and uh, other digital devices, we can jump from point A to point B and back really fast. You know, just between two points and things like that. Uh, or you just can say reverse, so the, the, the record's going to reverse automatically. But in real life, you can't do that. The human hand cannot uh, go forward and then backwards um, without uh, having to change speed. Just like I was talking about the, the suicide drills that a lot of, uh, you know, basketball coaches or soccer coaches use um, to, you know, have the, their, their students uh, run across, you know, the field at different uh, lengths, at different intervals. Uh, and it, um, basically, you know, you're going to have to slow down to change directions. So that's what 
this is proving, it's dispelling the, the idea that, you know, a, a turntable is just doing triangular waves. And that's also called like fencing notation when you're just talking about a, a wave that's just going back and forth, a jagged line. But that's not what's happening with turntablism. Thank <laughs> you.